Welcome to Here's One I Prepared Earlier. Today, we're going to do our bit for the community. Partly it's because it's a court order for something I definitely did not do, and partly because, hey kids, you have gotta look after each other. Namaste. Now, we all know how hard it is being a white, middle-class man whose mum's always cooked for him. So today, we're gonna to help a young guy get his life together by teaching him a dead-set winner in the kitchen. So this is Brian. You're a bit useless really, aren't you, Bri Bags? No girlfriend? You're living in a dump? Bet you haven't eaten a decent meal in months. And if I'm not mistaken, you've got scurvy. Just as I suspected, he's been living off two minute noodles and fish fingers. And it's killing him. Clearly, he needs a bit of a hand. <laughs> Honestly, kids these days. So today, we're going to show you and Brian how to cook something delicious, nutritious, and economical. You know what? It's so good, you can even use it to impress a date. Huh? Yeah. So we're going to cook a green curry of chicken in the Thai style. Now the way I like to do it is as they do in Thailand, and that's with a small amount of meat and lots of fresh, just cooked vegetables. Great to blow away those scurvy blues. Now you can make your own curry paste if you like. But we know no one's going to do that. So instead, get yourself a tin of this. <laughs> I hear you say. Cooking things from tins is disgusting. Not at all like what they do on TV. All right, well, two things. Firstly, this is a damn fine substitute for the homemade version. And you'll probably find that your average Thai restaurant uses it. And secondly, this makes it easy to whip up a green curry in 15 minutes, even in a place like this, which means you might actually do it, as opposed to the stuff you see on TV. Okay, Brian, go fetch. Come on, choppy chop. So, you'll need your handy little tins, plus... Brian? So, you need your little tins, plus some jasmine rice, some coconut milk, palm sugar, fish sauce, and then an assortment of veg. Now, I tend to carry a set with me wherever I go, but you can probably pick up pretty much everything you need from your local Asian grocer. Or if you absolutely have to fraternise the evil supermarket duopoly, you can get pretty much everything you need there too, including the little tins. Though your vegetables will probably taste like cardboard soaked in formaldehyde. <laughs> Anyway, each to their own. Do not, fucking do not, try and substitute the tins for some slop in a jar they're peddling from the latest MasterChef contestant to being thrown out. You got that? Brian? All yeah, right, good eye. Let's get cracking. First, put on your rice. Now, if you don't have one of these, <laughs> you're really not living. Go out and get one right now. Today, I'm using jasmine rice. Now, the proportions there are one and three quarter cups of water for every cup of rice. Now, I've just put in two cups of rice there. So how much water do we need, Brian? It's three and a half cups. Now, if you'd like a healthier alternative, you can use brown rice. The proportion there is one cup of rice to two cups of water. So, Brian, how much water do we need? It's four cups. Oh, sorry. So some people like to wash the rice first. What are you doing? Oh, you are fucking useless. <laughs> So, you can wash the starch out of the rice if you like, but really it makes bugger all different, so I say, why bother? Just keep things simple and achievable. 
So pop your rice in, set it to cook and leave it to do its magic. Now if you do insist on living in the stone age and using a pot on the stove, just use the same proportions, bring it to the boil, reduce to a simmer, leave for about 15 minutes, that should just about do it. Got that? Okay, good, moving on. So first, open up your tin of coconut milk and your tin of curry paste. Add your coconut milk to a hot wok. Then spoon in about half of the curry paste. You can add a little bit more later if you want a bit more spice. Bring this to a simmer, and leave it for about five minutes. Meanwhile, start to prepare your chicken and your veg. Brian? Today I'm using green beans, zucchini, carrot and bamboo shoots. Oh, hey Brian, have a carrot. Now, you can substitute a bunch of other stuff in there as well. Broccoli, bok choy, eggplant even if you like, maybe even frozen peas. So make sure you cut your vegetables like this, because of the water, and the density, and when they're cooking and... Oh fuck it, look at this diagram. So as you can see, I've cut the carrots fairly finely, the zucchini into larger chunks, and then the beans I've just top and tailed and cut in half. First put in your bamboo shoots. Give it a minute and then put in your carrots. Another minute, then your green beans. And finally, your zucchini. Now the idea is you want your veg just cooked through so that preserves most of the nutrients. Plus, it tastes a lot better. While that's happening, let's go prepare our chicken. So you can use thigh or breast. Now thigh is a bit more forgiving because you can cook it longer without wrecking it. <laughs> now Brian. Brian. Look, he'd probably put his shoes on the wrong feet if they weren't labelled, so we're going to use thigh today. Now, if you are using breast, this last stage is just about gently poaching it through until it's just cooked. Okay, cut the chicken into bite-sized chunks like this. Pop your chicken in and let it simmer for about five minutes. Oh shit, Brian, you're not looking too flash.
There we go. There we go. Hey, he's a good zombie. There we go. Okay, okay. Have a seat. Have a seat. There you go. There you go. There you go. He's a good boy. There we go. Oh, look, that's for you. Yeah, you, you have a two. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, looks like our chicken's cooked through beautifully. And the veg. Mmm. Have a lovely bit of crunch. Now, just time to add in some salt with our fish sauce and a little bit of palm sugar for sweetness. Serve with some jasmine rice. Here's some I prepared earlier. So there you have it. Thai green chicken curry. Great for curing scurvy and heading off the apocalypse. As well as a dependable, great tasting meal. That you can even raise up with some garnishes and other little bits of shit to impress a date. Bon appétit. Sadly, we lost Brian, but I guess that's just life and all of its beautiful, mysterious complexity. On the plus side, I've found somewhere new to live. Might have to clean up a bit though. Hmm. Mm, yum. <laughs>